Hi, I'm Lisa Terrell, the Communications Director for Murfreesboro City Schools, and I'm here with Dr. Trey Duke, the Superintendent of Schools, and we are doing State of the Schools Back to School Edition. Can you believe it? Back to school for the 24-25 school year already. It, the summer has flown. That's right. And we have been so busy. So let's talk about all the things that's been happening in our schools while maybe everybody else got a few days of vacation. Yeah, we had a really busy summer here in Murfreesboro City Schools. Of course, we had a fantastic summer school program with over a thousand students in our schools for four weeks, uh, making sure that they're well prepared for the next year. We wanna thank all of our teachers, our staff, and our parents who helped make that possible, but not just that, but our crossing guards, our school nutrition employees, our custodians who did extra work of not only getting our classrooms ready, but also taking care of the building as summer school was in process. It was huge hugely successful and we're really proud of the work that happened. Like we forget about the cafeteria staff. Mm -hmm. They worked all summer because not only did they feed all the students that were in those summer school programs, they took that bus on the road. So the child bus was rolling all through July, making sure we're going out to uh, the families and making sure we're providing what they need even during these summer months. Absolutely, we don't stop in June mm -hmm. and July anymore. Uh, it's really a transition time for us, but we're, we are really proud of not just the educational opportunities that we provided all summer long, but as Lisa mentioned, also those feeding programs and our ESP programs to make sure that our community still has what they need even when traditional school is not in session. That's correct. The other people very, very busy this summer, uh, maintenance and our yard crew. So I wanna give you an opportunity to talk about some of those construction projects, some of the big ones that people actually see because they're on the outside, and then some of the little ones that are happening in, inside our schools. So we had a great summer this year as we were preparing for the new school year. Some really exciting projects happening. If you've driven by Mitchell Nelson Elementary, you've seen their beautiful new playground. I can't wait for our students to get a chance to play on that this year. We've had painting happening across this district. So uh, schools are getting lots of kind of facelifts with some painting happening. Some big projects at Hobgood, we've replaced the ceiling, and at Hobgood and Reeves Rogers, we're replacing some HVAC units. And of course, if you drive by Reeves Rogers, that's what's most notable. We have just broken ground on our brand new addition to our Reeves Rogers building. It'll be a 4,000 square foot administrative complex with a new nurses clinic, some small group rooms, conference rooms for parents. We are so excited about that. Now we are gonna ask our parents to be patient with us because for the next few months as we go through the school year, we're gonna have to reroute traffic, reroute buses, but I can promise everyone, if you can hang with us, it is gonna be well worth it when we're finished. It is gonna be so worth it and it's so nice to see the, the construction is happening quickly. So right. although we do know it's gonna take the whole school year, but it is really happening and we're so excited for that. That's right. I was able to go to Mitchell Nilsson Primary, see their new gym, all the paint and everything looks so nice and clean. The new, um, it's an entire new playground at Mitchell right. Nilsson Elementary, right? So that playground that was in the front no longer exists. That's right. But we didn't just get rid of it, we built a new one. We built an entire new playground. Like I said, it's absolutely fantastic. It's gonna be great for our students. It's gonna be great for our community as a whole. Not only that, we have more of our sport courts going up. The latest one's at Discovery School. So if you live in the Discovery School community, we encourage you to go by and see the sport court. Uh, so we will now have three of our five sport courts done. We have two more to go. Those will get started in the next few months. And by the end of this school year, all of our schools that have tennis courts will have had them redone into multi-surface play courts. It's a great asset to the community. And I will say that was provided by a grant. So it's money well spent. Absolutely, a huge shout out to our coordinated school health department. They did some really good work to help secure those funds so that we can, again, not just benefit the school, but the neighborhood as a whole. Absolutely. Okay, we've built, we've, we've fed, we've also done a lot of training. You wanna talk about some trainings? Absolutely, our teachers have been in some really intensive training over the month of July. So with June, we really focus on instruction with our summer school programs. And then in July, we're really looking at training our teachers and making sure they're well prepared. So teachers have gone through intensive math trainings, literacy trainings, science trainings to make sure that every student is getting a teacher who is well prepared to meet those needs. A huge shout out again to our curriculum and instruction team who do a fantastic job organizing these trainings and the feedback I get from teachers over and over again is how much better they feel and better equipped they are to go and meet the needs of our students. And so thank you to our teachers for their time in that this year as well. Absolutely. So we've had a great summer, a lot of activity. Now we're looking for a new school year, right? That's right. And those kids we have to welcome that we just love to see walk in the doors, those pre-K, our pre-K students, our kindergarten students. 
Let's talk about kindergarten phase in and why there is a kindergarten phase in. That's right. So we have our traditional first day of school for first through sixth grade students and kindergarten does come a little differently. So make sure you go to our website, which is cityschools.net to make sure you're seeing what the kindergarten phase in schedule is. The reason we phase in our kindergarten students is we know that for many of these students, it is their first time to be in a school building and maybe to have some of the requirements of when do we go to the restroom? When can I have snack? Um, how do I stay in my seat? That, that's something we learn, right? We don't just teach math and science. We teach students how to behave in a school setting. And for our teacher's sake and for the student's sake, we want to make sure that they get that attention they need. So those first few days, we do phase them in. And so we ask parents to, to make sure they're aware of that, that they look at that. And then uh, very quickly, they'll be doing those full days of school ready to go and be successful. A little tired though at the end of the day. Yes, yeah, I, mean, so I always it, say you plan on your kindergartner falling asleep home that first day. I totally agree <laughs> and being hungry because right. they are exerting so much energy but some of the things that parents could do like to help with that kindergarten phase in take them to the playground. We were talking about it's a community mm -hmm. playground whenever we're not in school. So take them, get them used to that. And get them on a schedule now. So yeah. if you know that your child's going to need to wake up about 6 a.m. to get to school on time, let's start that a few days early. Let's make sure that mm -hmm. the first time we ask them to do that new schedule is not on their first day of school. Now pre-K is also a phase in, uh, but pre-K is so different that we'll, we will be addressing those needs individually with the pre-k parents right? yes yeah so look out for that yeah. communication we have communication coming directly to our pre-k families uh, pre information to kindergarten families has been going out mm -hmm. and will continue to go out but pre-k does run a little differently of course we have a fantastic pre-k program we're excited to have those students in our building as well it's really gonna be a great year as we welcome back uh, not just our existing students but our new students mm -hmm. to the district as well so we also have some new faces like adult faces, not just the student faces that are coming into our district. A lot of them are actually not new to us, just in a new position. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a test here. Can you talk about those new administrators? That's right. We are thrilled to welcome our new administrative team at Northfield Elementary. Uh, Miss Melissa Miffleton will be our principal. Of course, Miss Miffleton currently served as the AP there prior to being named principal. So we're excited to have Miss Miffleton continuing that rich tradition of excellence at Northfield. Her assistant principal will also be a familiar face of Northfield, which is Miss Ashley Whitaker, who's been serving as her instructional coach in that building. We're also pleased to say that Dr. Alexandria Juno is coming to be our new assistant principal at Mitchell Nelson Elementary. She's a familiar face, although she hasn't been with us the last few years. She is returning home to Murfreesboro City and we're glad to welcome her back. The reason she's going there is because Ms. Jamara Deberry will be transitioning from the assistant principal at Mitchell Nelson Elementary to Overall Creek Elementary School. Their school continues to grow, which causes us to the need to expand their administrative team to meet those needs. So we're excited to have Ms. Deberry coming over to Overall Creek to help again, make sure that school remains one of the best schools, not only in uh, the state of Tennessee, but I think across the nation as all of our schools are. And then finally at Reeves Rogers, we're excited to welcome Mr. Christopher Penrose as the new assistant principal at Reeves Rogers. He'll be assisting Miss Natalie Hardiman who continues to serve as principal there. Great administrative team, uh, great across our district. Again, our schools are great because of the people who serve them. Uh, and that really starts with our leaders. And so we're so thankful for all of them. I want to ask you two things, so I'm going to let you think yeah. about it. We're going to talk about goals for the school year and let's talk about attendance and let's do attendance first and then goals for the school year because we push attendance matters that every day matters. But tell us why and let's talk about those pre-K, kindergarten, first graders and yeah. talk, really talk about them. Well, I think it's really appropriate to kind of combine this conversation around attendance and goals because so many of our goals depend on whether or not our students are in school every day. Attendance is incredibly important. We know that when a child misses a day of school, that is not something that they can just quickly catch up on. We build every day new content. And so it's so important that students are at school every day when they're healthy enough to be there. And it's really important that we depend on our families to help us meet that goal. So families, we do ask you, if your child is healthy, if your child is able to, that you really emphasize the importance of school attendance every day. And I will say the first few months of the school year, those are the most critical. Those are when we're building those habits, specifically in kindergarten, first and second grade, that emphasize the importance of school attendance. 
So families, again, thank you for your help. Every day matters. We have to make sure our students are in school and that's critically important because as you mentioned, we have goals. We have really clear goals this year as we continue to focus on increasing our literacy rates in our district. We have done that historically year over year for the past four years and we're excited to continue to see those literacy rates rise. We have strong goals around our math achievement, around science achievement, and making sure that our students are cared for not just academically, but also behaviorally and socially and emotionally. And all of that depends on students being in school. So as we wrap up, anything that I have forgotten to ask you today? You know, I think that's great. <laughs> we just want to say again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to our teachers and our administrators. Thank you to our staff members who work so hard from maintenance to school nutrition to our substitutes. We can't do our job without your help. And we are indebted not just to what you give to us, but the dedication that they show every year. It's going to be a fantastic 24-25 school year, um, and we can't wait to see you all soon. All right. Thank you. See you later.